Stress strain diagram is one of the most popular interview questions for stress analysis engineers. Now let us talk about this particular thing. So I am going to give you some facts about the stress strain diagram that are not uh, uh, popularly known. If you like this video and want to view similar content, do like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. What you can see on the screen in the solid white lines is the stress strain diagram of steel. It is applicable to any type of steel, high strength steel, mild steel, etc. So now let us talk about this. So we have four regions in this uh, stress strain diagram. First is the elastic region followed by the yield region. Uh, third is the strain hardening region and fourth is the necking region. The first region of the stress strain curve is the elastic region. In this region, the, the material remains elastic. So initially, the plot is a straight line uh, till the proportional limit. Within this limit, the, the stress strain curve remains uh, linear and elastic. So beyond the proportional limit till the upper yield point, that is the end of the elastic region, it remains elastic but not linear so this is a very small region the nonlinear elastic region the next comes the yielding region so this has the upper yield point the stress falls down to a lower value uh, that is the lower yield point the upper yield point actually varies from uh, test to test for a given type of steel but the lower yield point remains more or less constant and for analysis purpose we, we generally consider the lower yield point as the yield point so whatever we call yield point in the analysis, that is the lower yield point for steel. So, and beyond this, beyond the lower yield point for us, for a range of uh, strain, the stress remains constant, approximately constant uh, at the yield stress. Then comes the strain hardening region. So next comes the strain hardening region. In this region, the slope of the stress strain curve, that is the tangent modulus, uh, goes on increasing uh, till it till it reaches the necking region next comes the necking region in this region what happens the cross-sectional area of the specimen goes on uh, decreasing rapidly and finally the failure occurs you can see that at this in at the beginning of this region uh, there, there starts a difference between uh, the true stress strain curve and the engineering stress strain curve the engineering stress strain curve uh, considers the initial length of the specimen and the initial cross-sectional area. The true stress strain uh, diagram uh, tracks the area as the uh, as the as the uh, cross-sectional area varies, and also it tracks the length of the specimen as the length of the specimen varies. So, from the beginning of the necking region till the end, you can see there is a clear difference between the true stress strain diagram and the engineering stress strain diagram. This is an important uh, concept to be noted for engineers for the purpose of our analysis that is in the industry where we do nonlinear analysis uh, the curve we use is the true stress strain diagram not the engineering stress strain diagram of course till the end of the uh, uh, strain hardening region it is the same so there is there is not much difference between the engineering stress strain diagram and two true stress strain diagram so till that point it does not matter which one we follow but whether we follow the true stress strain diagram or the engineering stress strain diagram uh, the plot is approximately the same but but in the necking region the difference starts becoming big and uh, for the purpose of our analysis suppose we are doing a nonlinear analysis it is the true stress true strain diagram that we use for our analysis in the industry and also you can note the highest stress in the engineering stress strain diagram is the ultimate stress but however in the true stress true strain diagram uh, the, the the fracture stress that is higher the discussion on the stress strain diagram is one of the most important uh, questions i have come across in interviews for stress analysis engineers so i think it is worthwhile to know all the important points in this stress strain diagram so now let me make some interesting observations the fracture strength of the material is actually greater than the ultimate stress uh, so if you are using ultimate stress to predict uh, rupture of ductile materials uh, so it is actually conservative 
So a more optimized criterion according to the literature will be the triaxial strain. Interestingly, for a uniaxial tensile test, the triaxiality factor uh, is not one according to the literature. So lastly, as I said in the previous slide, the true stress true strain diagram is used for nonlinear analysis in the industry. For the uniaxial tensile test, it is simple uh, stress versus strain. So because one is a stress, principal stress, normal stress, all the three are the same. However, if you are going for a 3D structure where the where the stress state is going to be complex, so how will you characterize the plot as? Is it principal stress versus principal strain? Is it shear stress versus shear strain? Is it normal stress versus normal strain? Is it one missile stress versus one missile strain? Or is it something else? So now let us look, on, look into that. So why does it matter uh, whether it is uh, principal stress, principal strain, whatever? So whatever question I've just asked. It is because we test in 1D and we analyze in 3D. So in order to extend the 1D results to 3D, uh, we need to do this. Which stress versus which strain is it for 3D? Uh, it depends on the situation. Suppose if you are predicting the yielding of a ductile material, then it is one missile stress versus one missile strain. Suppose if we are predicting uh, the, the fracture of a ductile material, then it is one missile uh, stress versus uh, triaxial one missile strain. And if you are predicting the rupture, I mean the fracture of a brittle material, then it is principal stress versus principal strain. So it depends on the situation. This is something that I have learned from experience. Uh, I have not seen this in basic textbooks. These are the references that I have used. You may have a look at them if you wish. Thank you. If you like this video and want to view similar content, uh, do subscribe to my YouTube channel.